Hi everyone. Welcome to Navionics. We are doing the relief shading today. My name is Amanda Funk. I'm on the Garmin Navionics team. We are talking about relief shading. We have our webinar at navionics.com for any questions during or after the broadcast. We have a few people joining us today. We have Lee Means out of Northern Alabama with Inland Bass Fishing and how he uses relief shading. We have Dallas Spurgeon out of Kansas, how he uses relief shading inland. Matt Monks out of the east coast of Florida, saltwater and offshore. And I'm out of Maryland and I'll tell you how I use it in the Chesapeake Bay and the Mid-Atlantic and Canyons. And there's that email again, webinar at navionics.com for questions during or after the broadcast. Today, we are going to talk about high resolution relief shading, what it is, what products it's available on, how to use the chart installer to get it on your chip, your plotter compatibility to make sure you can use it on what you already have, and user interface and using the relief shading. I'm gonna turn it over to Matt and Dallas, and they're gonna tell us what relief shading is. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. So what is high resolution relief shading? So it's a combination of color and shadow, as well as some uh, high resolution uh, data, multi-beam survey, a few other things that we use to create a clearer view of the bottom structure. Um, why do we, why is this important? You know, we can use this to identify artificial reefs, points of interest, some places underwater that we may not know exist, and we can use that to catch more fish. Uh, it's, we have two different uh, coverage areas, so inland and coastal. On the coastal side, we do have the uh, continental US coastal covered, as well as areas in Alaska. And then we have 140 plus lakes that we have covered for uh, relief shading. Uh, products that this is available for on the Navionics side, on the plotter would be a Platinum Plus card and the Hotmaps Platinum card. So Platinum Plus is gonna be your more coastal product, Hotmaps Platinum will be your inland product. Uh, it's also available on our app, the Navionics Boating app uh, for the iOS and Android platform. And as we go to the next screen, we'll see a uh, hot maps platinum. So uh, one of the things I've included this so you can see kind of the chart cuts. Uh, it's pretty similar to our region's product in the fact that a lot of the states are congruent. Uh, in this, I wanna just make sure everybody understands Tennessee is applicable for the South region and the East region. Uh, so this gives you all the features of NAB Plus which I wanna make sure I mention that all Navionics cards when purchased, you get one year of updates for free on that. It's included with a subscription. Uh, with the Platinum and Hotmaps Platinum product, you'll get satellite overlay, 3D view, panoramic photos, sonar chart shading, and relief shading as part of the additional features. And if we go to the next slide, we'll see an example or some of the examples of relief shading. So there's two different looks here, uh, depending upon what system or lake you're on. Some lakes are a glacial cut lake, some lakes are a, a bowl, and some lakes are actually a river channel and river basin. So on the left, you'll see a really good example of a river basin, as I would call it. Uh, you've got the channel, which is clearly marked with one color and some of the flat areas and points marked in several different other colors. And then to the right would be more like a lake like Mille Lacs or an area like that where you see some bars and it's more of a flat lake um, but it, this color shading model gives you a much better idea of what's down on the bottom and much more intuitively. Um, so that's really our inshore or our, our coastal or our lake offering, excuse me on that. And then as we move, we'll go into our coastal offering and that of, of the uh, platinum. But before that, we'll go into, this is just a brief screenshot of the lakes that we've got, some of the lakes. This will be available at the end of the presentation. I'll have some links for some of the important things that I think y'all might need. Uh, this will be one of them is the specific relief shading lakes. So that's, uh, you can see everything that we've included there. And if you go to the next slide, we'll, uh, we'll go into the next product, which is the coastal product in Platinum Plus. So these right now you can see, this is the, all the equivalent uh, coverage of Garmin. And we've got full golf shading or full golf coverage. We've got some coverage down in the Virgin or the into the Caribbean. We've got West Coast and East Coast. Again, this is all the NAB Plus uh, features plus your 
3D view, your panoramic photos, satellite overlay, sonar chart, shading, and your relief shading, as well as, again, updates for a year with the subscription. So that's basically what the products that it's offered on for Plotter. And then if we go to the next slide, we'll see some examples of that. Uh, this happens to be some where you can see satellite overlays on. It's in full. And you can see that in the shallow, it's going to be a little bit more of a red coloration. And as you get deeper, you'll have some blues and it'll go into dark purples as we get into and, and back into reds as we go into the deeper. So you can see a couple of different versions here where clearly the channels and the areas that you would want to boat and fish would be a little more highlighted and a little more intuitive to, to view. So, And as we move on, so the next question is, how do we get this? Um, any product that's a platinum product or a hot match platinum product, when you purchase it, uh, you'll need to go to our website and download the chart installer. Once you've downloaded Chart Installer and put in your appropriate information, in this case, I've programmed in a Raymarine Axiom Pro, and this happens to be a 632P. This is our central and southern Florida chart, and you'll have two different options at the bottom where it'll show you relief shading or sonar chart shading, and you'll be able to do one or the other when you do this in the Chart Installer. So this is how we get relief shading on our cards. And as we go here, uh, you'll see we've, I've broken it down to on the left, you can see where it'll basically be your initial screen. And you can see that you check all the boxes uh, in depending upon your setting. So this is a Raymarine 165 uh, G series. If you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see relief shading. Once you click that or satellite overlay sonar chart shading, it will allow you one or the other. You cannot have both on the card at once. And then once you click that, you'll see that the box is highlighted on the, the box to the right. In our case, we would highlight relief shading and we would click start. Um, after that, or before that, what I want to mention, if everybody sees the little blue dots, you will actually move those to the area that you want to download and then you would hit the start button. So in the next slide, you can see as we progress and it will ask you about the overlay. So if you want to rewrite the overlay, and in this case, we're switching from satellite overlay sonar chart shading to relief shading. And we would want to do that. So we would click download. That would start the download process. And then our card would be fully updated with nautical chart, sonar charts, community edits, and the relief shading in this case. So as we move on, we'll see that on the next slide, I'd like to turn this over to Dallas because he's going to just talk to us about a couple of key points that we want to talk to you about setting our plotters up to get these features. Sure. Thanks, Matt. Uh, I'm glad we've got an opportunity to talk about the settings specifically. Occasionally, I hear from a customer that they can't see the map data after they purchase a card. Uh, but with relief shading, your map settings are the most important, most important piece of the puzzle. And you can see on this page here some of the different settings they've got as far as the chart detail is set to high, the aerial overlay opac uh, opacity is set to 100%. Uh, we've got the Navionics chart picked. And our photo mode is set to full rather than land only or land and shallow. But if we don't have those settings set correctly, what you'll see is most likely what's on the next page. Perfect. In this particular example, we can see some excellent map data, but we're not getting the high quality imagery and some of the vibrant colors that we expect to see. This is because that sonar chart button hasn't been turned on. In the next picture, I've added in some of the contour lines and the sonar shaded areas to show you how well these areas match up. Again, this is great mapping, but it's not the relief shading we're looking for. So just remember to have all your settings set correctly with your sonar chart on and your satellite overlay on. And that'll get you the relief shading you're looking for there. Thanks, Dallas. So the next thing we'll go into is this is the other offering. So this is the Navionics mobile app. So new this year, we added relief shading and sonar chart shading, but we're gonna talk about relief shading today. So if you have the app or you don't have the app, either way, you're gonna still need to download this, download the new app, uh, make sure you have the most current version in the app store, which again, available for iOS or Android. Uh, once you download or update your app, then you're gonna see these new, the little, third button, which is in the middle, which is the overlays tab off to the lower left-hand corner of the screenshot. 
And if we look on the next slide, we will see a better breakdown of how to do this. So you'll click menu and you will go into download maps. And then what'll change where your old app would give you the highlighted area and no choices. Now you're going to make sure that you click the plus button there and you're gonna add the relief shading and sonar chart shading because both of those are now available on the app. And then once you've highlighted those, you're gonna download your area. So that'll give you access to either or. The difference between plotter and mobile is that mobile will allow you to have both and switch between the two. Whereas on plotter, you can either have either or. So that's a very important thing to understand. As we use the, the mobile, a lot of people like myself, we use that for more planning. And then once we're on the water, we use our plotter for on the water. So if we, if we go to the next slide, we go into the map options button. So this is once you've downloaded your area again, and you've downloaded sonar chart shading and relief shading, you can see, as I've indicated in yellow, that is your layers button. That's directly on the uh, face of the app. And then once you select that layers button, it goes into map options. And you can see what's available as well. At the top, you, you can switch between nautical chart, sonar chart, and then you can change your overlays as well. So if we go to the next slide, I'd like to turn this over to Lee, because at this point, we're gonna talk about everybody's individual areas. All right, thanks, Matt. Um, so I live near Huntsville, Alabama and fish the Tennessee River and its impoundments regularly. Um, I've got a few screenshots here that I'll go a little more in depth on how I personally utilize relief shading on the app using my phone and or tablet. Um, this first shot here I have of relief shading, it's a broad flat area out in front of Lucy's Branch Marina on Wheeler Lake. This is an example of an area that doesn't have much going on in the way of contours. Uh, keep in mind also that this is currently summertime while we're recording this webinar. So on this particular day when I was utilizing it, I was out looking deep for summertime bass. Um, and I'm using this example because I wanted to showcase how you can use release shading to help you better understand contour lines and their relations to depth. If you can read contour lines, you have no problems finding subtle differences in depth, but with relief shading overlay, you can actually see where like the shaded area is and about the middle of the screen. The smaller dotted lines represent where an old creek or river channels must have been, but the shading inside of that line, so kind of just north of it on the screen there, um, this allows that area to stand out. Again, we don't have a lot going on here um, as far as you know, really tight contour lines, but if you just use the ever so slight shade there, um, I actually used this and went out and found where some, and located some deep fish here. So again, that's just an example of how the relief shading can help you better understand what the contour lines represent. So we'll go to the next shot. The second screenshot I have here is a little further down on river, on the river, on it's still on Wheeler Lake. Um, I dropped a waypoint on the back side of this ledge where it also kind of forms a point. Depending on the current flow and the mood of the fish, they'll sometimes use these type of breaks for ambush points or to feed on bait fish or to just be and relax in calmer water. Um, you'll also notice in the screen capture, there's some bright orange and pink. You can also utilize fishing ranges within relief shading to highlight certain depths. On the Tennessee River, people tend to use the six foot to eight foot range, which I highlighted in orange, or the 12 to 15 foot range, which I've had highlighted in pink to have some success in catching bass. Um, but in this particular part of the lake, the pink area is also a popular flat stump field that we have out in front of some docks. So we'll go to the next slide. And kind of to further exemplify how you'd use fishing ranges with relief shading, this screenshot is the tailwaters below Wheeler Dam, which starts Wilson Lake. Um, this is an extremely popular area of the lake for all sorts of fishermen catching multiple species of fish. Um, but amongst us bass fishermen, this is a great spot to catch Tennessee River smallmouth. As you can see from the big pink area, um, which again highlights that 12 to 14, 15 foot of water, um, you'll see some holes that are not highlighted. That represents depths that are greater than and tend to be 16 or 17 foot of water. And the fish will use these holes and these eddies to feed up on bait fish, um, get caught. They, those bait fish get caught in the subtle kind of water flow changes. Um, then as you go left, further down the river in the tailwaters there, you'll see that um, the relief shading paints a picture of the depths ranging from basically 17 to 20 foot. 
but you can also see two small pink humps. Those, those rise up, and those those 15 foot humps the fish also utilize. So again, just wanted to kind of show you that you know as you become a little bit more familiar with relief shedding and how to read it, you can also still re utilize the fishing ranges feature to, to to dial it in a little more and find some more spots within the spots, if you will. Great, thanks, Lee. And we're going to go over to Dallas to see how he uses it in the Ozarks. Perfect. Thanks, Lee. That was some good information there. Um, and a lot of my customers do use relief shading for fishing. Most of my customers think of relief shading as a tool only used for fishing. But I use my relief shading for navigation just as often as I do anything else. Garmin and Navionics have always been great about removing the guesswork. And that's what's so nice about navigating in a place you're unfamiliar with. Personally, I frequent Lake of the Ozarks, and as many of my customers know that spend a lot of time there, safety on the water needs to be on the top of your priority list. So if it's a new lake you've never been to before, using relief shading is able to help highlight that channel, or just like it says here, to highlight the world for you and show you what needs to pop out. And it makes it easy and removes all the guesswork. I'm able to stay in the channel, and I always know exactly where I'm at. These two screenshots I'm showing here are out of Lake of the Ozark, Ozarks up on the northern half of the lake. And again, they just give me a really good indication. I can look down, scan the screen real quick and know that I'm still in the channel. Uh, we can go ahead and move to the next ones. Now these two screenshots I took directly out of Table Rock Lake. Uh, that's another place I like to go down and specifically use relief shading for fishing. Now the first time I was ever at Table Rock, I would use a screenshot closer to the one on the left-hand side of the page. I'm looking at the lake as a whole. I'm trying to figure out maybe where some of the best spots are in there. Now I do have my contour lines in the water, but I'm really trying to look for some darker shaded areas, uh, an extra branch off the side of the lake where the water might be moving a little bit slower. On the right-hand side, this screenshot, I've zoomed in to that specific branch. And you can tell by looking on this side, now that we're zoomed in, the contour lines match up with that dark spot perfectly. I can see a, a real deep shelf there. So I'm going from everything from 10 feet deep all the way down to 50 feet deep. And as I've zoomed in, I can start to see flooded timber on that map now. So I can guess right there on that right screenshot in that real dark uh, piece that moves through the center, that's probably a good spot for me to look for fish. And that's a lot of how I try and use relief shading to cut out the guesswork and save myself time on the water. Thanks Great. guys. Thanks Dallas. Let's see how Matt uses it in Florida. Thank you all. So one of the ways I, I start out usually is I take the app and I use that for planning in conjunction with plotter on the on the water. So I happen to take this screenshot actually from my plotter, but I could do the exact same thing with my mobile. Um, I, I use that, you can identify these shallow areas in red, and you can see the channels in yellow and some of the flatter areas. So essentially this is down in the Marquesas by Key West, and you can see some of the flatter areas out here in the 24 to, to 100 foot of water where we would look for patch reefs and we wanna go yellow tailing or uh, do any of our grouper fishing or anything like that, shallow water. And then I could also use this to see any of the deeper edges and ledges. And then as, as it gets deeper, you see also it demonstrates the uh, color zoning there. So we've got red in the shallow, yellow, and then it goes off into a blue. Um, you'll see some other pictures that we've got, uh, and Amanda's got one coming up where when it goes to the shelf, we actually invert the color palette. So it actually shows all those key areas of drop-offs a lot better as well. Um, I also use this in areas that are new to me. So this would be an area that maybe I don't load all the time as I'm from up a little farther north. So I would definitely use this to see areas that I want to go fish. Um, any of these outer bars, any of these, this hard bottom, any of these shallower places as well. Even if I wanted to go snorkeling, I could use this for that. So if we look at this and then we'll go to the next one where I can show you a couple of different looks as far as the depth of water. So on the left, this happens to be, again, another shot of plotter, but this is deeper water. Uh, this is 1200, uh, in the middle, you can see there's a reef that goes straight up and down. This would be something I'd probably use for daytime sword fishing. Try to find some of those potholes, those edges of hard bottom and rocks and reefs areas that I could try to see if I can drop on the bottom there and 
potentially get a daytime swordfish. Uh, and then it also tell me some areas that may be flatter towards the shallow end if I wanted to go tile fishing. Uh, so a lot of good looks out here, but as you can see, this is a different color palette like I talk about. As it gets deeper, it's gonna go into the blues and purples, and then it'll invert once it gets to a certain point with a drop off. Uh, to the right, you're gonna see a, a picture of mobile. So this is a screenshot I took from mobile. This is off of uh, Boca area, Fort Lauderdale. And the reason I took this, this is a great reef, not only just for fishing, but a lot of the divers use it because it actually, you can get in the water and you can drift right up the reef with uh, the current. But I like this, so you can see on the inner reefs a little flatter and it has less sharp drop offs, just one steep one on the front. And then it gets, it kind of tapers back on the backside. The deeper reef, you can see it's a much harder ledge but you can see this all from relief shading. So this will tell me where I want to go. I may want to go lobstering. I may want to just drift dive. I may want to fish and I want to drift fish. So this is going to tell me if I want to do that. And I may want to anchor so I can see some of these wrecks that are indicated or some areas that I may want to fish in, a, in flats or get up in front of an area. So this is how I use this to plan. So uh, if I'm at home, I'll use the mobile app. And then once I get on the boat, I'll correlate the two so I can actually do that. So that's, that's kind of the way I use relief shading is really to find new areas and look at, new, at areas that I've fished before to see if maybe there's some other areas in there to fish or the reason why there's fish in the areas that I've fished traditionally. So a lot of different looks to it, a lot of different reasons to use it. But I'm going to hand this over to Amanda now because I think she's going to show us a couple of things about her part of the world. Great. Thanks, Matt. So here's a screenshot of an area I like to fish in the Chesapeake Bay. So in the Chesapeake Bay, we have a couple trophy seasons and we fish for rockfish. Some people know them as stripers or striped bass, but we call them rockfish here. And where we like to catch them or where we have the most luck catching them is if we are zigzagging right along a channel ledge. So we like to see where that ledge is falling off. And in this screenshot right here, I have sonar chart turned on so you can see all of my contour lines and kind of on the right hand side of that you see a really heavy set of contour lines that tells me that that ledge is pretty steep and as it turns out that brick house bar it goes from 30 feet up there around in the yellow and the green down to 132 feet in the darker blue so that is a steep ledge we have a couple other of those right up here in the middle part of the Chesapeake Bay, right around Bloody Point, where it will drop from 12 feet directly to about 120 feet. And I may or may not have run my lines over that 12 foot and skimmed the bottom. I'm not going to confess to that completely, but this relief shading with these contour lines really helps me stay in that safe space so I don't get too shallow. And I also like to use it out in the canyons. So we run out to the canyons quite a bit for some of the pelagic species. So this is kind of what Matt was talking about where the colors go back and kind of invert themselves. So as we go deeper, you can see down in these crevices of these canyons, we get back to the brighter colors and that shows us the deeper water. Uh, this one is the Norfolk Canyon. This is where I caught my first white marlin a few years ago, and I've been hooked ever since. So while I will share my secret on relief shading, there's some secrets I won't share about my fishing in the canyons. But the relief shading is a really good aid and representation of what's going on in those canyons. You can see with the change in colors, as we move along the left-hand side of that picture, where those crevices in the canyons are. And when you use this with the sonar chart and the contour lines, it really helps you read what's going on on the bottom and in those canyons to help you understand and give you the best opportunity to catch those fish. So that's how we use it in the Mid-Atlantic. And I'm gonna turn it over to Matt to let you know a little bit more about Navionics and how we update and maintain our products. So go ahead, Matt, take it away. Sure, thank you. So the next couple of slides, I'll basically go over, try to answer a few questions that we normally have in the field, as well as provide a couple of tools to help answer those questions on your own as a consumer. Uh, one of which is a lot of people ask me, you know, why why do we need to buy another chart, or why why should I keep my subscription active, or why do I need to update my chart, uh, even though you have an active subscription? Uh, so this is called the heat map. 
And we provide this on our website. And at the end of the presentation, you'll see a references page and I'll give you the direct link to it. Uh, but it's also under the features page on our website. Basically, this will give you a two year screenshot, a one year screenshot and a six month screenshot of all the things that we've updated. So you can look at areas like Florida, the Gulf or even Puget Sound. And you can look at BC area in general and you can see all the white hot areas are the areas that we've really done a lot of updating. Even with the blue areas, you can see places like the Caribbean, the Southern Caribbean, that we've still done a lot of updating. Even out in Bermuda, you can see. So use this as a tool to answer your question, why do I need to update? Um, you know, again, it's a very helpful tool to see what we have updated. You can even see all the stuff to the West. We've done a lot of updating out in the Western lakes. So if we go to the next slide is another tool. One of the most common questions I, I get in the field is, you know, Will this work with my plotter? Does my plotter accept an MSD card? You know, will Platinum run on my, my plotter? So if you are really new to Navionics and you want to get a Navionics card after listening, especially a Platinum card for Coastal or an Hotmaps Platinum for Inland, you might want to start with this compatibility chart. So what's, what's my plotter? What are the features I'm going to get if I do Nav Plus? What are the features I'm going to get if I get Platinum Plus or Hotmaps Platinum? This will help you answer that question fairly quickly. Between that and you know some of the other reference tools on our website, this should help you uh, get a better idea of what we have to offer. So the next slide I have is one that will answer just a couple of quick questions in the field. One of which is, does my plotter take you know SD or MSD card, or I bought a, uh, an SD card from you, but my plotter takes MSD. So MSD is micro SD card. That's real quick in the back of the plotter or in the back of the card adapter. This is the SD unit. So it's all there. Please don't return it. Just it, pull it out of the back. Uh, if you bought a bundled unit, make sure that you know that that's a, a NAV plus card and you need to register it. And you can download Sonar chart there and community edits because that card only comes with a, nav, a nautical chart on it. So you're gonna need to download Sonar chart. Uh, use the uh, compatibility chart to find out which unit you have and which card you need in that unit. And then any issues or questions, you can also use the webinar, but you can also use help at navionics.com. So that's another important one. So, and that's all I've got, Amanda. As far as the next slide, we'll-, we'll We've got go some resources. Back. You wanna tell us about those? Yeah, so the resources I've generally listed here are the ones we've gone over in the uh, webinar. So basic one is navionics.com. Uh, the relief shading lakes list is this link is under the relief shading lakes. This is not all of the lakes for Navionics. This is just the lakes that have relief shading. And then under that, you'll see the compatibility guide. So this, you'll click on this and it'll give you pretty much every chart plotter that we've been compatible with and what level of compatibility we have with it. And then the final one is the heat map. So that'll get us pretty much all the resources that you'll need just to start asking some questions or seeing if, if this is something you want. Great. Yeah. This, uh, go ahead, Amanda. Excellent. OK, well, we want to thank you all for your time today and learning about relief shading. We also want to thank Matt and Dallas and Lee for giving us their experiences with relief shading. I want to reiterate again, if you have any questions about high resolution relief shading or anything we discussed in this webinar, please email webinar at navionics.com and put relief shading in the subject box. Thanks, and we'll see you all again soon.